Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. I've been shopping, and all these parts that you see before you are going to form this. Only much better. Okay, so not all of this stuff is new. I mean, some of the stuff I've had for quite some time, like a coil. This transformer with a rectifier on it. This other rectifier, a heat sink. These capacitors here, this chip, these resistors, and those resistors, and this resistor. That's all stuff that I already had. The rest of it, however, is the stuff that I bought. So, got my output MOSFETs here. Some cores to wind my gate drive transformers on, which I'm going to experiment with. Resistors, more resistors, variable resistor, diodes, 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 and even more diodes. Capacitors, chips, voltage regulators, and even a board to put stuff on. Now, the thing is, I'm going to have to experiment with the gate drive transformer because trying to get the actual core that I need to wind the gate drive transformer on is pretty much next to impossible. So I'm going to try with these little cores, and I'm going to try with these big cores, and I'm going to see which works best. Ideally, I wanted something between these two sizes in an N30 grade core, but they just didn't have that, so I just had to go with the... So I just had to go with these, and hope that at least one size of them works. Also, I'm going to be experimenting with various gate drive transformer configurations, and here is the schematic. Now, the more observant of you might have noticed that this is a full bridge output stage because, yes, I'm going to build a FULL BRIDGE TESLA COIL! Not just a silly half bridge, but a FULL BRIDGE! So, this is basically how it works. There's four transistors controlling the current going into the primary. So, what happens is, first these two transistors turn on, so the current can go through this transistor, and this way through the primary, and then through this transistor. Then the whole thing switches, so these two transistors are on instead. So the current now goes through this transistor, and this way through the primary, and then through this transistor. Pretty simple. And unlike a half bridge where the primary only gets half of the voltage, in this circuit the primary gets all of the voltage, so it pushes a lot of high frequency AC power through the primary and we get lots and lots of nice big sparks out of the secondary. Although, in order to do this, we've got to make some kind of circuit to make the transistor switch. So, that's where these transformers come in. And what they do, let's just um, pay attention to one half of the circuit here because it will be easier to explain, is a transformer takes the signal from the control circuit and provides two isolated outputs for each transistor. And also we got a little bit of protection circuit along the way. We've got this 5 ohm resistor and these 16 volts in the diodes, which clamp the voltage down so it doesn't get too high or too low, which could damage the transistor, and we really don't want that, so that's what they're for. And this diode here just helps discharge the gate at the end of each pulse. Now, you might also have noticed that the bottom transistor, or bottom transistors, are connected out of phase. And the reason for that is that when this transistor gets a positive pulse, this transistor will get a negative pulse and vice versa. And the other good thing about having a gate drive transformer is that should these MOSFETs blow and become short-circuited, it's not going to send a huge amount of voltage into the control circuit because we have isolation between the MOSFETs and the control circuitry thanks to the gate drive transformer. And this is the control circuit. Now, it's still a work in progress, but as you can see, it uses a CD4046 PLL chip, and what this does is it puts out a high frequency square wave, then it gets a little bit of feedback from the secondary via this antenna, and it's able to tune itself to the secondary's resonant frequency. The only trouble is, the output from the CD4046 really isn't strong enough, so it needs a little bit of help along the way, and that's where these chips come in. We've got a 
MIC4551 and an MIC4452 and essentially what these are are just amplifiers that's pretty much what they are but they're designed for pulse waveforms and the MIC4451 and 4552 do the same thing they amplify the amount of current but the 4451 also inverts so when this chip's output is high this chip's output will be low and when this chip's output is high this chip's output will be low so what we get here is AC at double the voltage and all the current we're going to need well, at least all the current we're going to need for the MOSFET gates. So as a matter of fact, you could eliminate that capacitor there, but it's always a good idea to keep that capacitor there anyway, just in case there is any DC. And this resistor here just helps keep the waveform nice and good. You know, basically it helps to prevent ringing and nasty spikes in the waveform. Now, I've got two pairs of these chips. One is going to go to the second gate drive transformer, and one is going to go to the first gate drive transformer. But I'm hoping that I can get away with just one pair of chips connected to both gate drive transformers. And also I'm going to experiment with a few different gate drive transformer configurations and see what works best. But anyway, that's all going to come up in the next video. And I've been waffling along for far too long now, so I'll see you in that video. And until next time, goodbye.